So uh, I still felt that I would be charged, but I couldn't figure out what it was that I could be charged with, because I knew I was guilty of none of those crimes. By the end of uh, uh, 2018, this became a weekly drumbeat. Mother zeroes in on stone. Mother tightens the noose on stone. Mother totally focused on stone. Uh, and then on January 25th, uh, on January 24th, I got a phone call from a producer at CNN who said, uh, I need your home address. I want to mail you something. I said, hmm, all right. Well, I gave her my home address realizing that my home address could be found online fairly easily, but then when I went online and looked, I noticed that there were two addresses since I had fairly recently moved, and that may have caused some confusion. So I said to my wife, um, they're coming tomorrow morning to arrest me. And she said, you've been saying that for six months. I said, no, no, I'm pretty sure this is tomorrow. Still can't figure out what the charges might be, but uh, I do think we need to be prepared. So I set my alarm for 5 a.m. Uh, I got up, I took a shower, I put on one of my Roger Stone did nothing wrong t-shirts, uh, and I sat in an upstairs bathroom window where you could see the entire front yard. Uh, at about uh, 5.45, my cell phone rang. It was a member of the Fort Lauderdale Police Department who just happens to be a friend, and he said, uh, Hey, what are you doing? I said, uh, I'm kind of waiting. Why? He said, well, I'm over at Starbucks. And there must be 30 FBI agents here getting coffee, and the drift I get is they're headed to your house. And I said, well, I've been expecting them. Uh, so I was fully cognizant that this was going to happen. Um, shortly thereafter, I saw the CNN crew show up and set up right outside my house, 25 feet from the front door. Uh, that was 14 minutes before the FBI arrived. The shortest stakeout in American journalistic history. Mm -hmm. uh, then 17 armored vehicles with their red lights flashing arrived. They taped off the street. They warned all my neighbors to stay inside, that it was a dangerous situation. They brought this giant battering ram up to the front door as if I wasn't going to answer it. They had these really mean looking dogs on, uh, on, uh, uh, you know, on leashes. There were 29 agents in full SWAT gear wearing night goggles carrying assault weapons. Um, I didn't know this until later, but two amphibious units pulled up to the canal behind my house because Port Lauderdale is the, you know, is the sister city of Venice. We have a lot of canals. I lived on a canal at that time. And there were frogmen on the on the the boats, all armed. They completely surrounded the house, uh, and then they pounded on the door. So I opened the door, uh, and uh, they said, "Are you Roger Stone?" I said, "I am." They said, "Would you please step outside and put your hands behind your back? We have a warrant for your arrest. We also have a warrant to search these premises." I said, "Okay." Stood, came out get my chest up to make sure the camera could read my t-shirt. Uh, and I uh, put my hands behind my back and I was cuffed. I was wearing uh, cut off shorts, and bare feet. And they said, um, who else is in the house? And I said, only my wife, two dogs, and three cats. And they said, there's no one else in the house. I said, no, there's no one else in the house. How about guns? I said, you folks are well aware of the fact that I don't own a gun. Uh, then nobody in the house has a gun. I said, there are no guns in the house, even though I support the Second Amendment. Uh, and they went running up the stairs to wake up my wife. Now, my wife is hearing impaired, so without her hearing aids, she's completely deaf. With her hearing aids, she's at about 20%. Um, and then this terrible thought flashed through my, uh, through my mind that they would issue a command not recognize that she couldn't hear them or understand them and that she would get shot. Fortunately, that didn't happen, but she did wake up looking down the barrel of two guns, same way I opened the door, looking down the barrel of two assault weapons. Uh, then they marched her out in the street in her nightgown and her bare feet to stand out in the middle of the street about 10 feet away from me. I, of course, said, uh, I'd like to know what crime I'm charged with, uh, and I'd like to speak to my lawyer. 
by the way, no one ever read me my Miranda rights. Kind of interesting. Uh, they said, well... You were arrested with no Miranda rights. Correct. That is correct. Uh, they said, um, we are going to take you to the FBI processing center in uh, Miramar, uh, where you, and you'll be able to meet your lawyers there. They're going to meet us there. I said, that's fine. I'd still like to see the charges uh, that I'm charged with. They said, well, we'll show them to you in the car. So I got into the car with, uh, with three agents, um, and we, caught, of course, caught the traffic going to Miramar, so it took longer to get there. But they flipped over this notebook, and I realized that I was charged with lying to Congress. Really? Well, wait a minute. Comey lied to Congress. Clapper lied to Congress. Brennan lied to Congress. Hillary lied to Congress. McCabe lied to Congress. Mueller himself would ultimately lie to Congress. Uh, this is hardly, this is a first time white collar process crime, it has nothing to do with the 2016 election, it has to do with the af aftermath. They threw a, a jury tampering charge in there to make it sound nefarious. The irony of that is the juror that I was accused of tampering with threatened to show, shoot other witnesses, exculpatory witnesses in my case, in the head, but they didn't charge him with jury tampering. Um, I was alleged to have threatened to steal his dog. Well, if you read the entire email chain, you would understand that I was objecting to the fact that he wasn't feeding the dog, and I told him in the previous email I was going to report him to the ASPCA or Animal Control in New York City because the dog didn't look healthy to me. Context. Uh, he wrote a letter and said on the stand that he never felt threatened to me he, by me, and he never thought I would steal his dog, but nonetheless, I was uh, convicted uh, of, uh, of uh, witness tampering, a conviction I've appealed. So you asked me how I felt. Um, I felt uh, exhilarated because I understood they had made a giant public relations mistake. Arresting a 67-year-old man who doesn't own a gun, who doesn't own a, uh, a valid passport, uh, for a non-violent white-collar process crime um, was overkill of the largest magnitude. If they had simply said to my lawyer, we're going to charge your client, please bring him down to the White House, for, to the courthouse for arraignment, I simply would have done so. They actually spoke to my lawyer the day before I was arrested because we turned over 30 pages of text messages between myself and the government's chief witness, Randy Credico, which I believe proved indisputably that he was my source of what little I knew about WikiLeaks. That information, as, long as, as well as multiple exculpatory witnesses that went to the grand jury, were ignored because they had already decided what to charge me with. I, I want to ask, so um, your, your observation here in terms of, <laughs> interesting, because I just asked you, how did you feel at that moment and, and that detail? Um, the obvious follow-up then is, why did they do this? Why did they use this much force, this much emphasis, this amount of response uh, just simply to arrest you? Why did they do that? Uh, it, it's, a, it is, it's an interesting question. I mean, first of all, I should point out that my legal defense fund raised $1.6 million in the, in the subsequent you know, 24 hours. Up until that time, I had raised a couple hundred thousand dollars. So it benefited me in that way. Uh, I guess the idea was to intimidate me. Uh, perhaps uh, later on it would become very clear that they wanted me to cooperate and testify against the president, which I declined to do. We can get into that. Uh, but also maybe to send a message to other witnesses who they wanted to cooperate uh, in my indictment that this same treatment um, would be given to them. It is also, by the way, the signature of uh, Andrew Weissman, the epically corrupt prosecutor who was uh, the de facto head of the Mueller investigation. Um, he's had a number of disciplinary problems, but this is right out of his playbook. Um, completely unnecessary. This cost the taxpayers $1.1 million. But the most important reason they did it was for CNN was to put the black hat on me, to make me look like a drug kingpin or, a, or, or a, some kind of a gangster. I mean, just because I sometimes 
dress like a gangster. I was going to say you're bowler. Doesn't doesn't mean doesn't mean. Well, I've never worn a bowler. I, I do it. wear a Hamburg. Oh, uh, okay. Important um, distinction. Stand corrected. Uh, yeah. uh, bowlers are for like uh, silent film comedians. <laughs> I've I've read uh, a number of times that people suggested that the reason the heavy hand of uh, the arrest and what was and the arrangement, uh, the alleged arrangement with CNN, uh, was basically out of frustration that the special prosecutor's office couldn't get the president, and so as a result, they were going after the next best thing. What do you think about that? Well, there's some evidence uh, to that effect that happens later on. First of all, it's important to recognize that I was arrested at 6:05. At 7 a.m., a CNN reporter emailed. A a draft copy of my indictment to one of my lawyers. But the draft copy had no court markings on it, no time stamp, no pacer stamp, but it did still have the meta tag initials of the person who wrote it, Andrew Weissman. Just the fact that CNN had that is a violation of the law. That document was sealed and didn't get unsealed until 9.30 that morning by a magistrate in D.C. So uh, the claim by, FBI, by CNN that they had no advance notice is disproven by the fact that they had a copy of my indictment hours before it was unsealed. We filed a complaint with the judge uh, on that. She, of course, didn't care. It's okay when the government breaks the law. You just can't break the law if you're a uh, defendant or the rules. Uh, so there is your proof. Um, because they were uh, also executing a search warrant, and they would then go through my house for the next 13 hours. They pulled these two large trucks up to the front yard. They set up these temporary tents and these long tables. And they literally took everything I own or my wife owns uh, and went through every square inch of the house uh, looking at everything, looking for something. Uh, they took all my electronic devices, my computer, my laptop, my uh, cell phone. Um, all of my computer floppy disks. You know, of course, what they found. Nothing. No Russian collusion, no WikiLeaks collaboration, nothing of value. I have a lot of books, because when I lived in New York City, I used to go to the Strand bookstore and buy books used, uh, and I'm a voracious reader. They took every book that I had, took it out of the shelf, flipped through it to make sure that I wasn't hiding anything inside, and threw it on the floor. I'm, I'm curious, um, uh, later um, Special Prosecutor uh, Prosecutor Mueller wrote an op-ed in the Washington Post. Yes. Um, I, I have not read that you commented on it, but basically saying after a commutation from the President um, that regardless, you're still a convicted um, uh, felon. Yes. And, and what he said in the op-ed, what was your reaction to what, uh, what Mueller what said? What he says is categorically untrue, it's the recycle. Roger Stone was in touch with Russian intelligence officers, plural. He's referring to a Twitter direct message exchange that I had with the persona of Guccifer 2.0. We know about it because I released the full text of it in 2017. It's benign. Secondarily, the exchange happens in late October long after WikiLeaks has already released all of their documents, meaning any kind of uh, collaboration or collusion is chronologically impossible. The content of, its, of it speaks for itself. There's nothing there that's inappropriate or illegal or even vaguely interesting. It's pattern. But here's the best part. They can't prove that Goosefer 2.0 is a Russian intelligence officer. They just assert it. What court of law has ruled on that? Where has where's that been tried at trial? I wanted to prove at my trial that it's not true using forensic evidence and expert testimony, but I was denied that right. So, uh, and it, it's interesting because he, it, the way he worded it, he said that Stone was in communications with Russian intelligence officers known to us. Within an hour, of this being published, Rod Rosenstein puts up a tweet quoting Mueller, but he changes it very cleverly to Roger Stone was in touch with known Russian intelligence officers. See how clever that is? It makes it sound like 
I was knowingly in touch with somebody I believed to be a Russian. Even if I did have, even if he is a Russian, let's assume that he is, the contact proves nothing whatsoever. This is, this is the recycle. We're all the way back at the beginning. We're recycling facts that I've explained a hundred times. I don't have the forum of the Washington Post, but whoever wrote this for Mueller it, it, is just incorrect. It brings me to the question. When, when uh, Special Prosecutor Mueller wrote the op-ed in the Washington Post, what was your personal reaction to it? Did you take it? Uh, uh, I hear you of his inaccuracy, uh, but I, did you I, take it personally? Did you feel just one more time uh, another wall has fallen? They are, they are trying still, I think hopelessly, to justify this entire escapade. The declassified documents that finally were released several months ago prove uh, emphatically that there, they never had any evidence of Russian collusion on which to base this investigation. It was illegitimately started. And in my case, they didn't even uh, approve an investigation into me until three months after they had already concluded there was no Russian uh, interference. And again, your theory of why they did this was because... Because, uh, well, we find out later. They did it because I have a 40-year relationship with Donald Trump, because they were well aware of the fact that we were in constant phone contact through almost all of the end of 2015 and all of 2016. Uh, and I think they viewed me as someone who might be able to be pressured to flip and testify against the president. They actually prove this later, but to answer your question, my immediate response was to sit down and write uh, a rebuttal, which was printed, I believe, at the Daily Caller, uh, or perhaps the Gateway Pundit, or both in some form. Uh, it's a now a standard item in my daily speech. This is not the first time. They will recycle the same false charges. This is really simple. If I was involved in Russian collusion, you had three years and thirty million dollars. Why didn't you charge me with it? Andrew Weissman, who's the de facto head of the Mueller investigation, because I believe Mueller himself to be non compass mentis, he writes in the New York Times after my commutation, we need to drag Stone in front of the grand jury and see what he knows. Hey Andrew, you had three years. You never called me to the grand jury because there is nothing to find mm -hmm. and you know it. Interesting. Um, in the House Judiciary Committee uh, a couple of weeks ago, I'm curious to your reaction because that's basically what Attorney General Barr said to the committee. And finally, in one heated exchange, he said, uh, I'm paraphrasing, um, uh, the rightness of um, sentencing a 67-year-old man to seven to nine years in prison. And it, it was kind of an off-the-cuff frustration of when is enough going to be enough. Now, regardless of what you feel about uh, A.G. Barr or, or this entire situation, I thought at the time when I watched him, because I watched him do that, uh, live, and he kind of lost his temper for a moment, lost his composure. Exactly. Or anyone you outside what the, the department. wanted you to do. And that's what you did. No. Let me ask you, do you think it's fair? Do you think it is fair for a 67-year-old man to be sent to prison for seven to nine years? It was in accordance with the sentencing. No, it was not. You just said that it was. And your line prosecutors I, will testify that it was. Also. I thought about uh, Roger Stone, and I thought, well, Roger Stone is probably watching this right now. What would his reaction be that the attorney general basically said, and from his perspective, what is right and what is right? What was your reaction when the attorney general said that? Well, he was simply telling the truth. The recommendation of the four prosecutors in my case, just for the record, who are not career non-political line prosecutors, as the media keeps describing them. Jonathan Kravis worked for Barack Obama as a political appointee in the White House for eight years. Uh, Aaron Zelensky worked for Hillary Clinton as a political appointee uh, in the legal counsel's office at the State Department for two years. Uh, uh, the other, Michael Miranda, went to become the chief content officer at Facebook, where the first thing he does, did was to ban Roger Stone. These people are completely political, they're as political as I am. But in their sentencing recommendation, if you read it, they want me held responsible for crimes I wasn't charged with 
or convicted of. For example, I wrote a book called The Myth of Russian Collusion. It published on February 9th. You can look it up on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or Publishers Daily. That's the official publication date. The gag order didn't come into place until several days later. So therefore, the book does not violate the ban. Oh, yes, it does. 25 more months. Roger Stone threatened a federal judge. This is my favorite one. I uh, posted an image created by an organization called Corruption Central. In the upper left-hand corner, very small, is their watermarked, trademarked logo. I have an affidavit from the graphic artist who designed it. It is not a rifle's crosshair. It was based on a septic cross. It's on their stationery. It's on their website. It's on every image of anyone they've created. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg. But in a media feeding frenzy, by the end of the day, that became Roger Stone produced an image with a rifle crosshair superimposed over the judge's face, which is not what happened. Uh, when I, and I went under oath on this, and I said, yes, I admitted to stupidity. Publishing an image that was open to misinterpretation, but I didn't mean to threaten anyone. It doesn't matter. I wasn't charged with or convicted of threatening a federal judge. There's a very specific crime. That's a serious crime, uh, except for I didn't commit it, and no court says that I did, but they want to give me an extra year in jail, again, for a crime I did not commit. There's no judiciary finding that that was the case. Uh, there are other examples I'm just giving you, too. Mm. I, I, I was going to ask you, um, I, and there are other things that I want to explore with you, uh, remembering that we're talking to an LGBTQ audience. But as it related to all of this, um, when the, uh, as it relates to the commutation, did you have notice in advance that that was going to happen? Before it was announced publicly, did you know? Uh, did I know? That, uh, that your sentence was going to be uh, commuted? Uh, uh, no, I actually had no uh, first-hand assurances. Um, I'd had no contact with the president for two years on the insistence of both my lawyers and his lawyers. Yeah, okay, so you had no notice that uh, that was coming. And my, and my lawyers um, had never talked to the White House lawyers. Um, I had a number of mutual friends uh, who were outraged uh, by my prosecution. Uh, I, I guess the part that we have to cover because it puts everything in context, is on March 14th of 2019, all of this began to make sense when one of the prosecutors, uh, assistant U.S. attorney, contacted one of my lawyers and asked for a private meeting. And they met in Washington at the Justice Department, and they said, this was two weeks before the Mueller report was to be issued, they said, uh, look, it's your, your client's going to be convicted, a DC jury is going to hate his guts. He's going to go away for a long time, probably tantamount to a life sentence. We think it's time for him to cooperate. We think it's time for him to come clean. We think it's time for him to confess. We think it's time for him to re-remember this list of phone calls between himself and candidate Trump. And if he's willing to finally admit that these were about coordinating the WikiLeaks disclosures with the Russians, we might be prepared to recommend leniency in his sentencing. In other words, they wanted me to lie. They wanted me to bear false witness against the president. I had testified before the House Intelligence Committee under oath. I never discussed WikiLeaks with the president. True then, true now. By the way, I passed two polygraph tests conducted by the most reputable two operators here in the state of Florida, the people FDLE and the FBI use, and I passed both of them. Donald Trump, in his written uh, answers to interrogatories from Mueller, said the same thing. Also happens to be true. Uh, they wanted me to uh, contradict that. I refused. Now, in the aftermath of my commutation, Congressman Jerry Nadlier, uh, Adam Schiff, Hillary Clinton, uh, uh, others uh, have said Stone blackmailed the president. He had knowledge of misconduct by the president, but he maintained his silence in return for clemency. There's no evidence of that. 
whatsoever. That is a complete fabrication after the fact. If they, in their investigation, knew that, they would have charged me with it, and they would have impeached Trump about it. Uh, it simply doesn't exist. Now, there are two witnesses who gave uncorroborated plea bargain-induced testimony that they overheard conversations between me and the president, but even their testimony is full of holes. Michael Cohn says it was in July. Then he says, no, no, maybe it was in August. I'm not sure when it was, but it was never that's when it was. Mm. Uh, so that's not evidence. That's, uh, that's artifice. So um, you hadn't had contact with the president um, for two years. You had no notice in advance. Uh, of the commutation. Except for, I, I, I should say, I had faith that it would happen. Yes, yeah, I heard you uh, on that point. I'm curious, uh, do you recall where you were when you first heard the news? Yeah, I was in my living room uh, uh, here in the, uh, I guess it would be the uh, Victoria Park section of Fort Lauderdale. Okay. We have moved to a much more modest abode. You were watching the news? Well, uh, what happened was around 5 o'clock, of various news outlets. I think Fox was first, but then followed by ABC, and then it became ubiquitous. There were reports that the president would commute my sentence. 